So for the people who are stumbling toward ruin, guilty, that was me. Anybody else? Before you knew the Lord, were you stumbling towards ruin? I'll wait. <laughs> yeah, the message of the cross, I would mock my mother. It's, it's nothing but a tall tale for fools by a fool. But for those of us who are already experiencing the reality of being rescued and made right, it's nothing short than God's power. No man could have pulled you out of that mess. But God's power stepped in and said, you know what, there's no pit too deep for me that I can't reach down and pull you up out of that pit. And I'm really grateful. Thank you, Lord. And then the next verse is, this is why the scripture says, I'll put an end to the wisdom of the so-called wise. And I will invalidate the insight of your so-called experts. That's a verse, Isaiah 29, 14. So Paul now gets really like in your face. This is what happens when you stay in the marketplace. So where's your philosopher? He was with them, right, in Athens and Corinth and Ephesus. These are all cities where, you know, when he got put on trial, he, you know, who, what's his babbler talking about? No, no, he had the real deal. Where's the philosopher? Where's the scholar? Where's the skilled debater? Bring the best one you got. Step up. <laughs> I love this. Step up if you dare. I really feel like the Lord is saying that to the church. Step up or stand down. If you're going to complain about the culture, but you don't want to run for office, kind of empty. Are you willing to do anything to, to change the culture, or are you just going to complain about it? I'm looking in the mirror now, right? I'm so not, not trying to point a finger here. We, we got to step up or stand down. Just don't talk about it if you're not willing to do something about it. Anybody can call out the problem. How about become part of the solution? Run for school board. The, the former uh, executive director here, Joel Davis, is now on the school board in um, Hillsborough. Yeah, and strong Christian, knows the word, really powerful. Step up if you dare. Hasn't God made fools out of those who count on the wisdom of this rebellious, broken world? Do we live in the American culture as a rebellious, broken world? Read the paper. Does anybody read the paper anymore? Look online. It's a mess. It keeps going in the wrong direction. We tell a different story. We proclaim a crucified Jesus, God's anointed, who embodies God's dynamic power and God's deep wisdom. But now Christ has risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Okay, so there you go. They were big on first fruits. You know all about that principle. But Jesus is the first one that came out of the grave and stayed out of the grave. All the other people that were resurrected in the Old Testament died again. Bummer. They had to do it twice. <laughs> Jesus kept on living, and he's alive today, making intercession for you and me. That's pretty good. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, that would have been Adam, right? By man also came what? The resurrection of the dead. You happy about that, Martin? Hallelujah. Cure to cancer right on the front row. He had a grapefruit sticking out of his neck. You know, he's got a good voice, doesn't he? So what did the enemy want to do? Take out his voice. No. Gone. Cancer free. Hallelujah. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. In the future, but now too. We're pulling that not yet into the now. Made alive, each one of his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterward those who are Christ at his coming. Who's in that category here? If he came back today, you're going with him. All right, good, glad you know that. If you're not sure, come up for prayer. It's just a matter of inviting him in. Like, there's not a big qualification process here. It's not like my people will get back to you. No, he's ready today to say yes to you if you want to say yes to him right now. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. So Jesus did what the Father told him to do. He reversed the mess that was made by Adam. And then he will be handing the kingdom back to his Father. And then we will be ruling and reigning with him forever, for eternity. And again, that should give you lots of hope 
that no matter what we're dealing with here in this life, it doesn't compare to what we have on the other side for eternity with him. And, you know, in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the things of the Lord, knowing this, that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Hallelujah. It's not just another church service. You're changing a diaper of somebody's baby, and they got saved in the service. You're parking a car out there, and that's going to be your future wife, even though she gave you a dirty look when she pulled in. <laughs> For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. Worked out pretty good for me. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. And then if you jump to verse 42, this is just, we could stand up now, just so you can stretch your muscles a little bit. And now Paul's going to get into this little bit of a, a back and forth here. He says, the body is sown in corruption. We were all born with original sin, right? But what happens? It's raised in incorruption. So you're coming up on the other side with none of that sin. God's an anti-gravity God. It's sown in dishonor, and it's raised in glory. It's sown in weakness, but it's raised in how much power? The same mighty power that raised Jesus from the dead. We started there in Ephesians right at the beginning. It's sown in a natural body, but it's raised in a spiritual body. There is a natural body and, oops, sorry, wrong way. And there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first Adam became a living being, but the last Adam, who would that be? Jesus, the last Adam, is a life-giving spirit. So if you have the spirit of the Father and the Son in you, you are a life-giving spirit too. Thank you, Lord. Why would I go listen to Led Zeppelin records? You know, that would have been one of my downfalls. I had to go take all my albums and throw them in the back of the garbage truck. One of the benefits, the privileges of being in the garbage business, I could just go right up to the back of the truck. I knew right where they were. <laughs> and uh, business was always picking up. It was amazing. I know. So lame. So lame. Oh, my God. You get paid $5 an hour and all you can eat. Oh, please stop. Come back, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Think about this. You now are a life-giving spirit. You're not just breathing. You're not just taking up space. You've got the same spirit in you that's the life-giving spirit that's the difference between Jesus and, and Adam. That's good news. I'm almost done. Everything has an order. The body's not an, uh, animated first, uh, empowered by the spiritual, first the physical comes, and then the spiritual becomes its life-giving source. So you see how powerful the Holy Spirit is and why it totally changed things, not just when he died on the cross, resurrected. When Holy Spirit came, that was the game changer. And you have to have him or else you couldn't be a Christian. It's just now what are we doing with him? I know I said that last week, but I want to bring this point home because we can take the not yet into now, today. At ShopRite, wherever you go, the gas station, you could be bringing the future into the present because God will speak to you to speak to that person that's pumping our gas, right? He wants that person saved, doesn't he? Okay, well, no respecter of persons. The first man, Adam, came from the earth and was made of dust. Gravity again. The second man, Jesus, has come from heaven. Hallelujah. A version 2.0. Whenever you see the line, that means it's the last slide. Hallelujah. <laughs> the earth man, Adam, we should say it out loud together, right? Since we're on the last one. The earth man, Adam, shares his earth nature with all those made of earth. Likewise, the heavenly man, Jesus, shares his heavenly nature with all those made of heaven. How many here in that category? Ho! Oh. You're anti-gravity. Just as if we carry the image of the earth man in our bodies, we will also carry the image of the heavenly man in our new bodies at the resurrection. That's the not yet is going to become the now. 